In this video, we'll be looking at the Hardy-Weinberg principle. So before, uh, the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to talk about what is the Hardy-Weinberg principle, uh, what are the two equations that we look at, and try to explain why these two equations are the way that they are. And then we'll look at uh, how do we actually tackle a Hardy-Weinberg equation uh, a question about, and then look at two worked examples in that sense. So we'll start off with saying what is the Hardy-Weinberg principle. So the principle states that in a stable, non-evolving population, the allele frequency would stay constant. What that means is that whenever we apply the Hardy-Weinberg principle, we're saying that, that nothing is changing. Right? If we start with this many alleles for this gene, then it stays exactly the same. And we use this principle to calculate the proportion of people or the number of individuals with a certain particular genotype based on in terms of monogenic inheritance. But the thing is, in reality, there are loads of assumptions that we have to apply when it comes to hardware and principle, which is a very commonly asked question. So uh, the assumptions would be saying, for example, we're assuming that this population is quite large uh, and that there's random mating. So there's a completely random mix of alleles. There are no mutations happening whatsoever, so there are no changes from one allele to the next, and there is no selection pressure, meaning there's no evolution happening, which is kind of as stated in the original principle. So a very common question will be uh, asking, under what sort of situations would the Hardy-Weinberg principle not be applied to, uh, which is the correct answer is to say any changes that disrupt the genetic equilibrium, basically saying in any situation where those assumptions are not applied, for example, migration leading to a change of population size or mutation, leading to change of value frequency or evolution because of selection pressure. So actually keeping with that in mind, you, it might not be difficult to notice that actually, in reality, Hardy-Weinberg principle cannot be applied because it's very hard to find a, an ecosystem, uh, a population where there is absolutely random meet, uh, mating and there's absolutely no mutation and absolutely no selection pressure. It's quite unlikely. So um, it's important to keep that in mind. So with, without further ado, we'll look at those equations here. So the first thing that we'll look at is thinking about that uh, it's a monogenic inheritance, meaning that, uh, and also, not only that, but we're saying that each gene has two alleles only, the dominant and the recessive allele. So, uh, for example, if we are now going to be looking at, let's say, eye color gene, and we'll use the typical letters, um, big letter B for uh, dominant uh, and small letter B for recessive allele, then we can say that both the number of dominant alleles add with, added with the recessive alleles would equal one. Now, uh, rather than using the letters, the letter B, uh, usually we use the letters P and Q. So we say the first thing is that the number of, like I said, the number of dominant alleles with the number of recessive alleles added together would equal one, which is the total percentage of all alleles for that gene. So one means 100% of all the alleles for that gene. So this is the first thing. P plus Q equals 1. So imagine if we take a step further, we'll be looking at two heterozygous crossing together, then you will get three possible genotypes. So you'll get uh, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Now, remember we said that we're not going to be using the big letters here to, uh, the big letter B to represent all of this, because that's not what the Hardy-Weinberg principle is. Then we'll, we'll translate it, basically, to the Hardy-Weinberg principle's letters. So big B, big B, meaning it is uh, two letter P, so basically two P together. And that actually... For those of you who are keen with numbers, it's actually P squared. And uh, big B, small b would be P and Q together, but keeping in mind that the phenotypic ratio would be 1 to 2 to 1, if you do a uh, Punnett square, you'll notice that the heterozygous will be two times more likely to occur than big B, big B, and small b, small b. So you will end up with two of the uh, P and Q together. Homozygous recessive would be Q and Q together, so that would be Q squared. And like I said, if you do a very quick Punnett square, you'll notice that 25% would be homozygous dominant, 25% uh, of it to be homozygous recessive, um, and then 50% of it will be heterozygous. So that's why we end up with the equation, the quadratic equation here, which is 
p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. 1 stands for 100% of all of the individuals that we're looking at because we say that all, let's say if we think about in terms of people, everyone would be under this particular situation. Like you can either have brown eyes or blue eyes, but regardless of what eye color you've got, you have to be one of those people who inherited one of these characteristics. So that's why we you say that it equals one. So we're here we're saying essentially all of the individuals with the homozygous dominant added up with all of the people who are uh, heterozygous, which is twice more likely, plus all of the people who are homozygous recessive would make up everyone. And that is essentially what the hardy wonder pr principle is about. So basically, this is what the hardy weinberg principle can be summarized into. So in a stable, non-evolving population, allele frequency stays constant, P plus Q equals 1, because all of the both uh, dominant and recessive alleles added together would be all of that gene. And P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, talk about all of the individual people with all of these different genotypes, we add up everyone together in that population. Assuming that we are when we apply this, we're assuming that there's a large population size, there's no mutation, completely random mating, and no selection pressure, meaning no evolution occurring. So what we're going to do now is to think about, okay, how do we actually do this in a question? Because actually in the question, most of the time is asking you to calculate certain things. It's a very much mathy question, so we'll have a look at it now. Now to summarize, actually, uh, the hardy one principle questions are not difficult to attempt, um, the maths side anyways. So here are three steps that you could do. Number one, identify Q or Q squared from the question. Then use P plus Q equals 1 to find out what P is and then use and then find out what P squared is or 2PQ is. So not all the time, actually, in only certain situations where you would use p squared plus 2pq plus q squared, really, because actually, uh, by only knowing p and q, uh, you'll actually solve most of the questions. You're most definitely guaranteed to be given uh, q of some sort. Maybe not so much q, but maybe q squared. You'll be given the number of people or the proportion of people with uh, that are exhibiting the recessive trait. And we know if someone is exhibiting the uh, recessive trait that they have to be homozygous recessive. And so we, the question almost always definitely starts from there. So we'll start with one particular example. So usually the question, for example here, we've got people with brown eyes and blue eyes. So we know brown eyes are caused by the dominant allele and blue eyes are caused by both of the recessive alleles together. So the question will be saying, given 23% of the people in this population have blue eyes, then you will need to find out the percentage of people who are, uh, who are heterozygous or homozygous dominant. Now actually we can't directly then say, okay, if 23% of people have blue eyes, then then 77% of the people, the rest of them, have brown eyes. Well, we know that because it's either one or the other. But the thing is, uh, we the question usually will ask you to find the exact uh, genotype, the number of people with that particular genotype. And sometimes you can have to convert the percentage into numbers actually as well. So anyways, we'll start with the first step. So first of all is identify Q or Q square from the equation. So the first thing to do here, we, we, know, we, we know that Q squared equals 23% because we know the people with blue eyes must be homozygous recessive. Now the thing is uh, it's not good working with percentages so we usually change the percentage into numbers so you just do 23% is basically 23 over 100 so uh, you do 23 divided by 100 then you get 0.23 so that's just a little trick that you can use. Now uh, what we need to find out is recessive allele frequency so you do basically to find that out is to do uh, the square root of q squared, so 0.23 square root. And actually, if you put the numbers into calculator, you will get 0.48. And I'm going to use two significant figures here, and I'm going to stick to that for the rest of the equation. So actually, when you're doing this, you need to find out the uh, significant figures that you're working with and stick to that one. Okay, so q is 0.48, so I found that out. Then a second step is to use p plus q equals 1 to find out what p is. So then I would say because p plus q equals 1, then therefore p equals 1 minus q, just to rearrange the equations. And because 1 minus q is basically 1 minus 0.48, so therefore I would know p is 0 0.52. So now I've also figured out what the uh, dominant allele frequency is. 
So now that I got both of them, I can find out P squared and 2PQ. So P squared would be the number of people who are homozygous dominant, and 2PQ would be the number of people who are heterozygous. So therefore, step three I'm going to write over here would be uh, the percentage of people who are homozygous dominant, P squared, and we know P is 0 0.52, so we square that. Therefore, they would be 0.27, which is 27%. So we know that 27% of the people in that population is uh, homozygous dominant. Or, if the question is asking you to find out the percentage of people who are heterozygous, you can still do that. Uh, but then, obviously, you have to be careful, which is, to, it, remember, it would be 2PQ. So therefore, you would do 2 times P which is uh, 0 0.52 times Q, which is 0 0.23. And then put the numbers in the calculator, your workout is not 0 0.50, which is meaning it is 50%. So we say 50% of the people in that population is heterozygous. So we'll go through this example again. So let's say you're given in the question, there are brown eyed people and blue eyed people. And in this population, 23% of the people have blue eyes. Find out the number, uh, the percentage of people who are homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Like I said, most of the time you'll be given the number of people with a recessive trait, so the phenotype, and then work out the, G, the, the percentage or number of people with a particular genotype. It's almost guaranteed going to be like that. You first of all find out what Q is from the question. So 23% have blue eyes, so it means 23% of them are Q squared. Then you work out Q, which is uh, 0.23 uh, square root, 0.48 there. Then you work out what P is from P plus Q equals 1. So P is 1 minus 0 0.48, so that is 0 0.52. Then therefore, because now you've got P, the number for P and the number of Q, then you can work out the percentage of people who are homozygous dominant, P squared, equals 0.52 squared and it's 27% or heterozygous which is 2pq 2 times 0.52p and 0.23 which is q then it is 50% uh, you get as the answer. So that is one example of how you can use the uh, hardy weinberg principle for in terms of an actual question. Now let's have a look at another example. In a group of 50 people, four of them have cystic fibrosis. And what you need to do is to find out the number of people who are non-carriers and the number of people who are carriers. So how do we do that? Now, first of all, this assumes that you would know cystic fibrosis is a recessive condition, meaning that a person can get cystic fibrosis if they have both of the uh, recessive values. So first of all, is to find out what Q, Q squared is. So Q squared, people with cystic fibrosis, is 4 out of 50. So you can just do 4 divided by 50. Put the numbers in the calculator then you will see that it is not 0.08. So about 8% of people have cystic fibrosis. Then from then you can calculate Q, which is not 0.08, divide a, uh, a square root of it really. Um, so then you will work out, put the numbers in the calculator, it is 0 0.28. And I'm like I said, I'm working with two significant figures here. So that's the first thing. Then step number two is to find out the number of, uh, well, find out what P is, the frequency of the dominant allele. So we know P equals 1 minus Q, therefore it is 1 minus 0 0.28, therefore we know that P is uh, 0 0.72. Again, I'm working with two significant figures as well here. Then the last thing is we need to find out what uh, the non-carriers are and carriers are. So keeping in mind that hopefully you would know, that cystic fibrosis, like I said, is Q squared. And non-carriers are talking about people who don't even have the recessive allele at all. So this is asking for P squared. And then the carriers are the people with, with the uh, recessive allele but not actually being sick. So looking for 2PQ. So here we would then find out that uh, P squared is basically 0 0.72 squared, like that. So that would be uh, 0 0.52, or you can say that it is 52%. And then uh, 2PQ will be 2 times P, which is 0 0.72 times Q, 0 0.28, and then resulting in the number of 0 0.40. So again, I'm working with two significant figures. 
But that's not the end of it. The question is asking to you to find out the number of people who are non-carriers and, and carriers. So you're not, you can't just finish your answer with the proportion of people with that. So you need to find out what the number is. So basically, for uh, people who are P-squared, so these are the non-carriers, you've got the proportion of the non-carriers, which is uh, 0.52 or 52%. So what you need to do is to times the total number of people with the proportion. So we've got a total of 50 people, so 50 times uh, 0.52 would be uh, 26 people, if you put the numbers into the calculator. Whereas on this side, you would get the carriers, and you do the same thing, the total number of people, which is 50, times the proportion, 0 0.4, then you will get uh, that it is 20 people who are carriers in this group here. So this is more likely to be a question that you'll get in, the, in an exam. So again, it's actually the same process where you first of all find out what the Q is, then from that find out what P is, and then from then you can work out anything. Although I would say in an exam, you will only be asked to find out one of them. But I'm showing you how you can find out both of them because you never know. Sometimes they might ask you for the P squared, sometimes you might ask you for 2PQ, but the idea is the same. Once you find out P and Q, you can work out anything. And that is the Hardy-Weinberg principle.